Good Monday afternoon, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to the I Love Seville show. Thank you kindly for joining us. We are live in Charlottesville, across Louisa County, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville network. It's an absolute joy and pleasure to connect with you guys through this platform. We thank a lot of the partners that make this program possible. Ting Fiber Internet is the crazy fast internet that powers the I Love Seville network. We love our friends at Ting Fiber Internet. Dr. Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Integrated Medicine has been a partner of ours for a decade in change. Dr. Wagner has your back and his team at Scott Wagner Integrated Medicine changing people's lives. So much to cover on today's program. We have a friend of the show, Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes. We will introduce you to Mr. Barnes here in a matter of 10 seconds. But before we do, I'd like to get something off my mind and my heart about this guy. I first met Mr. Barnes when he was the athletic director at Monticello High School, and I was working at the Daily Progress. The Daily Progress at the time was owned by Media General. And Media General was notorious for underpaying us, overworking us, having us work till 1, 1.30 in the morning, five, six days a week, no holidays, paying for mileage out of our own pocket when we would have to drive from Rio Road to the jungle, Louisa County, to watch Mark Fisher, Bubba the Lion, Rontre Houchins, Eric Church, and a football team of tremendous proportions. And I talked to a lot of people in my life about going on into business for myself. And I'd tell you, 95% of these people said, don't do it. Take a consistent paycheck. 5% said, Jerry, give it a chance. Make it a go. 1% of that 5% said, you're going to be a success. Make it happen and do it like yesterday. And Mr. Barnes was a part of that 1%. And for that, I will forever be grateful to Fitzgerald Barnes, and I sincerely mean that. Judah Wickhauer is our director. If we could, please go to the studio camera and welcome a gentleman who's looking quite distinguished this afternoon. Mr. Barnes, good afternoon, sir. Hey, Jared. Thank you. I appreciate that. I sincerely mean that. Um, you have touched so many people, so many people, um, in a positive way. Why don't we, before we talk politics and before we talk shop, introduce yourself to everybody that's watching. I'm Fitzgerald Barnes. I, I represent the Patrick Henry District in Louisa County, uh, Board of Supervisors, and uh, I call myself a country boy at heart. <laughs> He's an entrepreneur. Um, he makes some of the best, is it barbecue in the uh, Commonwealth? Carolina barbecue, baby. That's my thing. <laughs> Carolina barbecue. Ba boss hog. Boss hog, that's right. Um, tell us about the, uh, what makes you tick, your passions, your passions, hobbies, and interests. You know, the biggest thing in my life and the thing that makes me tick is that I love people. I've always been a people person, and that's from my southern roots. My mom and we've all been, we were welcoming people. You come to our house, there's going to be 15, 20 people around the table eating. Just, just people, passion for people, and try to make a difference. That's my biggest thing. I always want to make a difference in life, and uh, that's, that's what drives me. You have the gift of human connection. You have the gift of vision. You have the gift of bringing people together. Um, you understand the concept of risk-taking. Let's get to your campaign, sir. Seventh term you are seeking. Why run for a seventh term, Mr. Barnes? I tell you, Jerry, I feel just as young as I did when I first started. Um, I mean, I'm energized. But, you know, I have to give God the glory and the thanks uh, because he's allowed me to, to be able to use the gifts that he's given me. But I'm running to continue to make a difference. We, we've done tremendous good things in Louisa County. You know, we got our rural character. I understand that the people of Louisa want to stay rural, but I understand also that from the business aspect that we have some things that we can do as well. And I'm just excited to go forward. Um, you know, I just think right now in my career that I want to work hard to enhance our vocational programs. And uh, I got a vision um, of building a brand new vocational center and to start creating some more uh, workforce uh, in our local economy. And, uh, you know, I just think we've done so many positive things um, and I'm excited about what we can do going forward. Neil Williamson watching the program, the president of the Free Enterprise Forum. He's giving you some props here. Caesar Brooks giving you some props and watching the program. Comments, questions, anything you'd like to relay to Mr. Barnes, put them in the social media feed in the comment section, anywhere you guys are watching the show. You know, 
Louisa County, I got here in 2000, been here 21 years, completely different in that 21 year period. I heard from a, a realtor, a good friend of this program, Keith Smith, you got homes trading in over a million dollars in Spring Creek right now, literally over a million bucks. You remember when Spring Creek was woods. Let's talk about the evolution of Louisa County in your six terms, soon to be seven terms in Louisa. Well, what happened, Jerry, was when I first got elected, we realized that we had to have water and sewer. And we wanted to place that water and sewer in our growth areas. And that's what we did. We, we drilled the water tower uh, at Zion's Crossroads. And by putting that infrastructure there, it helped us uh, starting to grow. But let me tell you the, the biggest thing that helped us. And I realized at that time, and I got it from a former supervisor up, up here in Alma, who's now dead, Charles Martin. And Charles V, the key to economic development is good schools. If your schools are good, you'll get business. And that's when we started putting money, investment into our schools. And our schools now are second to none in not only the state, Central Virginia, with the awards that we're getting, but we put the money in our schools and that helped us tremendously. How did you guys do that, Mr. Martz? Well, what we started doing, we went back and we looked at our teacher salaries. We, we, started, we knew we had to be competitive. Then we started looking at what we put in our classrooms. And we started increasing our budgets, started putting money where, where it met, um, <coughs> with our staffing, with, with our programming. And then, you know, uh, we had uh, administrations and things of that nature. And we hired a vocation director. So we put the money back in our schools. And, you know, where the realtors would come to Louise and say, well, you know, we don't know about your test scores. We no longer have that. People move to Louise because of our schools now, which is awesome. Stephen Carter is asking a question for you. Can you give us the evolution of Spring Creek and how this wonderful neighborhood happened? Well, you know, um, the owner at the time was Charles Kincanna, Chuck Kincanna. And Chuck was the most incredible visionary I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he was doing things with golf course community that I was like, wow. But we both at the time sat down and we said, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's, and when he decided to do that, we sat down and we looked at what we needed to have. And what a lot of people don't understand, without Spring Creek, we would not have the Lowe's, the Walmarts, those things that you see. We needed those rooftops in order to be competitive with those businesses. How do, for the, for the, you know, the layman that's watching the program, how does density like Spring Creek drive Lowe's, Walmart, and the development that we know and love at Zion's Crossroads? Well, Jerry, I think, as you know, anybody that deal with development, the first thing when businesses come in, um, especially boxes and things of that nature, they draw a 15-mile radius, and then they start counting rooftops. Then they look at the amount of money that those people make on an annual basis, and it lets them know whether or not it's feasible. Uh, we got a Starbucks coming up right now uh, at Spring Creek, and the Starbucks were based on the income of the people within that 15-mile radius. And uh, so uh, that what helped us tremendously uh, to get that. Let's talk about... Um how Zion's Crossroads and Louisa have just absolutely boomed, not only with Spring Creek. I live in Keswick. My wife and I, we drive to El Mariachi. My wife and I drive to the Walmart or the Lowe's on that side because, frankly, it's easier for us to hop on 64 than to go 29 north in the city of Charlottesville. When we do that, we patronize locally owned businesses as we're getting some stuff from the hardware store, or as we're getting some groceries from Walmart. Can you put in perspective how when a Walmart and a Lowe's comes to the area, everyone benefits, including some of these locally owned businesses? Well, you know, Jerry, what we had to do was when the distribution center and low, we had to prove to those executives that in a 30 mile radius or whatever, that people would come there. We had to prove to them because it, it what we call country miles. But what happens is they feed off each other. When people go to Lowe's, they'll go by and stop by some of the mom and pop sometime on the way home to small restaurants. Uh, believe it or not, of one of my favorite restaurants at Zion Crossroad, uh, and it's a small uh, restaurant uh, that I eat. A, I eat at a whole. It's a Crescent Inn, 
You know, it's a mom pop restaurant. I had friends come to town the other day, and we all went to the Crescent Inn. Um, but like you said, that's one of the things that that we benefit from is by having the Lowe's, Walmart. People come to Zion Crossroad as a destination. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do is to get people to come to a destination. It, it's what you call clean green. They come off the interstate, they spend, they leave their tax dollars, and they go back home. And we call that clean green. Clean green. We're not taxing the schools. We're not taxing the roads. We're not taxing infrastructure. We come in with an open wallet, an open purse, our credit cards. We spend the money. It drives the tax base. And then we go back then to our houses. Back, and go back home. <laughs> is that exactly right? <laughs> That's exactly what clean green is. Uh, Carl D. Brown watching the program. Great man with a wonderful vision. Good luck, Mr. Barnes, and your run for supervisors. Ronald Fleshman giving you some props. Marcus Allen giving you some some props. If you want to give Supervisor Barnes some love, just put your comments, your props in the feed, and I will relay it live on air. A number of media outlets watching Mr. Barnes here on the program. Let's talk about the value proposition of Interstate 64 and its proximity to Louisa and how it's making Louisa, Zion's Crossroads in particular, just a hot spot for everyone. Yeah, we couldn't be blessed with any better location than I-64. And right now, we're starting to see the fruit of that. Um, at the Ferncliff exit, we have a park called Ferncliff Business Park where Amazon has, uh, they're going to put a distribution center there. Uh, in fact, they should be up and running uh, by mid-November. Uh, that's going to provide some local jobs, but also in that park, uh, you know, we have uh, Cavalier Food products in there. We have Patrick Aluminum in that park. Uh, but because of the proximity to the interstate, is why people look to uh, locate there. And so having an I-64 is, is a godsend for us. Uh, but like I said, we want to be careful. Uh, you know, we want to do it nice. We want to respect the fact that people in Louisa still really uh, appreciate the rural character. So you're not going to see us develop every interchange off of 64 because we want to respect the fact that people really want um, to preserve that rural character uh, in Louisa. We got one of the best dentists in Virginia in the house right here. We have a live studio audience and Dr. <laughs> Benicle Page. This guy is our dentist, Judah's dentist, my dentist. He is A plus people. I found out right before the show started, Dr. Page, your fraternity brother <laughs> sitting across from me right here. What do you got to say about Dr. Page, the studio audience here? Man, you talking about a legend, man. I mean, Dr. Benicle Page is a legend and a great guy and also fraternity brother and I've learned a lot from him. Uh, his, 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 he's a calm, cool guy, and you don't ever see him get rattled. And I use and I use that a lot because he, he don't get rattled, and uh, you have to be like that. So I I I love to see Dr. Page, and like I said, he's a calm guy, and he just keep it moving the same speed. Dr. Page also one of the sharpest dressed men I know in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Marcus Allen says, a great leader in Mr. Fitz Barnes. Tom Filer, I hope I'm saying your last name okay, the right way, Tom. Good luck in the upcoming election. Fitz has done an exceptional job representing Louisa and the Patrick Henry District. If you want to give this leader some props and praise, put it in the comment section on all social media platforms you're watching upon. I will relay it live on air to this gentleman who I have tremendous respect for. Um, Mr. Barnes, let's talk about Zion's Crossroads. A number of people asking about this. Can you give us the flip book? And sir, we don't have to cut to commercial break. We can go as long as you want. The flip book of Zion's Crossroads and how it became an epicenter for shopping, for dining, and for enjoyment. Well, you know, I, I'm, I want to be positive always. But we sat down about 20 years ago and, and we tried to negotiate with our colleagues, Fluvanna, a deal where we could all benefit and provide water and sewer. And at that time, what we had talked about was that we would split the tax revenue between the two localities at 50%. Well, I think they all looked at me like I was crazy at that time. And I said, well, if you guys don't want to do it, we're going to do it in Louisa. And that water tower that you see up in the, up in the sky was the catalyst of the entire Zion's Crossroad program. When we spent the money to put that water tower up in the sky at Zion's Crossroad, it changed the game because what happened at that time was it said, okay, you're open for business. 
We've had companies pass by there for years, but there was no infrastructure. So the first person I got to give a shout out to that came on the scene was the best Western Hotel. And Mr. Beasley, and uh, I have to give them, cr them credit, uh, Tom Beasley uh, and Bob Kramer. They took the risk. And at that time, I said, look, we got to have something here. We got to have something to let people know we're, on, we're open for business. And we sat down and negotiated some water hookups and stuff like that. And when that Best Western hit the corner, that was it. And let people know right then. We're, for, we're open for business at Zion's Crossroads. D.C. Val giving you some props right now on the program. We got uh, LaFronda Lewis watching in Maryland. She's giving you some props right now. Let us know where you guys are watching. On the heat map right now, I see four states watching Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes. Some of the fraternity brothers. Give them some props right now on the praise. And I will, uh, I will relay that praise live on air to Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes, a living legend. Can you give us some explanation and some insight on, tell, on, on how we navigate the need for tax base, which development, when done strategically, we all know drives tax base. And those dollars can be utilized however the municipality wants, while also maintaining community character and integrity because there's some folks that want Louisa to be rural but to keep it rural and to keep it green and to keep it the Louisa we know you got to have the tax base to fund it well Jerry I'll be the first one to tell you I want to keep Louisa rural okay um, I'm, I'm a big hunting guy and, and a lot of friends are hunters uh, I'm one of old school guys that I might get myself in trouble to go outside take my shotgun and shoot um, but I want to keep it rural but I also want to make sure we balance our tax base, that we're not just burdening our, our, our local people. Now, let me give you an example. With everything that we put at Zion Crossroad, we spent about $30 million with sewer treatment plants and everything. Right now, we are seeing about an $8 million net gain annually in tax revenue from Zion's Crossroads alone. About $8 million. Uh, that's a pretty good comeback on, on our investment. So we're, we're seeing that. Um, but the thing about Zion is Zion's not finished yet. Um, you know, it's going to continue to grow. Um, and But the thing is, we got to do it right. And like I said, one thing people in Louisa value more than anything, they do value their rural character. And I and we understand that. And I understand the balance and the delicacy of that. But they have accepted that Zion's crossroads and um, the lake area is our growth area. And that's where we will put our businesses. Jeff Cuff watching the program right now in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mr. Jeff Cuff says, what a phenomenal person that loves his fellow man. Mr. Cuff, thank you for watching the program here. Any questions, any props, any praise for Supervisor Barnes, please put them in the comment section of any social media platform you're watching upon. I will relay them live on air, six states on the broadcast. Nicholas Erpe, the uh, from Emergent Financial Services, the Chief Marketing Officer watching the program right now. Mr. Barnes, can you put in perspective the importance of having incremental tax revenue from sources like food and beverage, from retail, um, as opposed to putting the burden on real estate owners and rooftop owners? Because that's something, you know, if you own a home, we own homes here, all of us own homes here, including our fantastic studio audience here, who we love, Dr. Page. When we raise real estate taxes, it really hurts a lot of us, especially folks that are living on a tight budget, maybe on the back end of life, maybe in between jobs. So that's how gentrification could happen. So finding new tax sources is extremely important, Mr. Barnes. Uh, and I agree with you, Jerry. We, if you look at the surrounding counties, uh, Fluvanna, Alma, Louisa, Orange, you'll look to see that we have not raised our tax rate, our real estate tax rate. Uh, in the last 15, 20 years, but maybe once, once. Um, we try to do within our means. Um, but now, we do have growing pain. We, you know, 24-7 fire rescue um, has now, you know, taken part of, of our budget. Um, we do, we're going to have some burden with uh, building some new programs, like I said, vocational education. Uh, but one thing we've done is that when that revenue exceeds what we need, we have reduced that rate too. We've done that during my tenure. Uh, because what a lot of people understand, a young couple, their mortgage is dictated by that, by that real estate tax rate. So 
as that rate go up, their mortgage goes up. And I understand that far too well on how it affects them. So we try to do need based, but we also try to also be futuristic. Um, but we we're, we're standing our tax revenue increasing. And you know, I know I get people all the time say, Yeah, but my, my assessment went up. But you know, you buy a house f- for the value. Yeah, that's so, not necessarily a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. So, you know, you buy for value. So, um, but we're always mindful of that. Uh, we just increased our uh, tax forgiveness for our elderly. We keep our, we keep our eye on that. We want to make sure that we don't tax our elderly out of their homes. Um, so, uh, we make sure that, you know, with, with churches and things of that nature, you know, we do a lot of things like that. So, the community. So, we make sure that we watch those people who, who pocketbooks are, are, are tight and make sure we protect them. Brenda Purcell, welcome to the broadcast. Um, Chrissy Shouter, welcome to the broadcast. You've got a heck of a lot of Louisa County watching. Marcus Allen says he's watching in Attleboro, Massachusetts. And then he says, Omega Sci Fi, baby, <laughs> watching the program. We've got two of those right here in the house. I'm giving them some props right now on the program right here. Uh, Mr. Barnes, this question's coming in. Please offer us, offer us some insight on schools. Do we need more schools here in Louisa County? You know, um, I leave that up to the school board. Uh, I tell him about I, I, tr- I try not to cross that line because we got an awesome relationship with our school board. Um, like I said before, we, we, we're, going to, we're starting to grow, but I'll let the school dictate how they want to do that. Now, the only thing that I am going to stick my hand in a little bit is that we need a vocational center. We need a new vocational center because, you know, when I went to school, everybody pushed college, 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 but you don't have to go to college now to get a great paying job and so um you know i talked to a good friend of mine alan powell who owns snn communications they got linemen that are making 75 eighty thousand dollars a year um the walmart distribution out of high school you can make 60 65 thousand a year at the walmart distribution center so but we got to go back and train our young labor force that it's okay to not you don't have to go to college college is good but you don't have to go to make a good living Brandon and Isaiah watching the program. That's a football coach at Almora <laughs> High School giving you some props right now. He says he's a mentor and a leader of men, Fitzgerald Barnes. Brandon and Isaiah, we love what you are doing, mentoring and leading young men at Almora High School. Thank you for watching us. Comments, questions, you want to relay to the supervisor candidate, please put them in the feed. Mr. Barnes, I'll throw this question to you. Um, follow the real estate market closely. That's one of our businesses. Real estate, Charlottesville and Almora County are getting to be so expensive. We have no inventory on the market. New construction in Charlottesville and Almoral County is 800K plus because supply chains are pinched and there's no land to develop it. Supply and demand type of situation. We're seeing that demand and interest going to 20 miles from Charlottesville, 30 miles from Charlottesville. Scottsville's red hot right now. Louise is red hot right now. Waynesboro, Stanton, and the other side of the mountain are first time homebuyer red hot right now. How is the real estate pinch in the city of Charlottesville and Almoro County from your perspective driving interest to Louisa County? Well, once again, Jerry, our good schools are also uh, a plus. So where people used to not look at Louisa to buy homes because of that, they now are looking at Louisa. And we have communities, um, Falls View and Reedy Creek and uh, you know, we got communities that people look at for home affordability. Um, but like I said before, um, we're going to get some of that from Charlottesville. We're going to we're going to get some of that, and and we're going to get some of that from Richmond. You know, we're we're going to get um, people moving there, and and, and I tell you, the number one reason because of our schools. Uh, this is coming in from Thomas. Thomas says, Jerry, I heard you say earlier in the show that a home traded in Spring Creek for over a million dollars. That left my jaw open can you ask mr barnes what he thinks of spring creek and how it's being developed till this day you know jerry you know me i'm a a free market guy me too and the market dictates what people pay me personally i wouldn't pay a million dollars for a house (laughs) but the market i can't dictate what the market does the market is going to bear what it bears now not only louisa a lot of locales are going to have to deal with affordable homes, affordable housing. Uh, but, you know, when you say the term affordable housing, people start getting freakish. Affordable housing is not low-income housing. 
And when you say that, people just go, you know. And I've I've been a passion. I've been to Philadelphia. I've been uh, to, up near John, Baltimore, John Hopkins, and see how they do mixed homes. Where they got a guy might make a hundred thousand a year who live next to the door to a guy to make 30000 a year, and you can't tell who's who. And we're going to have to adopt some policies in this area, but if we're not careful, affordable housing is going to hurt our labor force because the people that work for us, the laborers, they're not going to be able to stay in the community in which they work. All, is it Alger Nichols? Uh, Mr. Barnes has a great vision and plan for Louisa County. Checking in from Southampton County, watching the program right now. Seven states watching Fitzgerald Barnes on this program right here. You want to give this man some props, put it in the in the feed, and I will relay it live on air here on the I Love Seville Network. Mr. Barnes, this question is coming in. Any plans for new development coming down the road where we can have more homes for us to live in in Louisa? You know, I just touched on that, Jerry. What I want to do, I want to, I plan my next term is to have a sit down with our citizens and start having that dialogue about affordable housing and not low cost, not low income housing. Like I told you before, the difference. But we have to start having that dialogue and we have to start having that dialogue now and we have to start talking about where we want it. Because we got, uh, for example, we got teachers and bus drivers uh, who call me all the time, Mr. Bonds, I can't afford a house. And that is disheartening. Uh, and, you know, we've been touching bases, but that's going to be a high priority. we got to sit down and figure out how to make that happen because our workforce cannot afford to stay in Louisa right now. Missy, is it Marini watching the program and giving you some props? Comments, put them in the feed. Emily Boardman, hello and welcome to the program. A lot to cover here with Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes. Dr. Page, we love you. We love you, Dr. Page. Um, I'm going to throw this to you, Mr. Barnes. Um, how do you see Louisa um, evolving from being, it seems like to everybody that's watching this program, Charlottesville and Richmond, Charlottesville and Short Pump are going to be connecting. This 64 quarter is just so impactful. And people now have the ability to work from anywhere. They're driving, they're working from their basement, they're working from their office, they're able to travel and work from their phone in their car. How do you see the future of Charlottesville and Richmond eventually being connected from a development standpoint with Louisa right in the middle? Well, you know, one thing, Jerry, um, we're, and I've talked to my, some of my board members, we have to change the businesses that we go after. Um, we got a workforce in Louisa that drive outside every day. They drive to Fredericksburg, they drive to Charlottesville, they drive to Richmond. We're going to have to start going after some of these data centers to get them to locate in Louisa. Because we got a workforce already that can work at those data centers. Uh, I have to give a shout out to Central Virginia uh, elected chairman Gary Wood and Filefly. Because what we're doing right now, the $19 million investment that we're making to bring fiber to every home in Louisa is going to change the game. Uh, what I'm going to propose is a business, and you familiar with this, is start looking at business incubators. We need to invest in small businesses in Louisa. And so I want us to help that along with doing, promoting incubators. But like I said before, the, like you, to answer your question, Charlottesville and Richmond, uh, Louisa is a very attractive uh, area. But uh, I don't foresee us in the future rezoning land uh, for residential development if it's not in the growth area. And that we're going to key, that's how we're going to protect that rural area. Um, and we're going to bring everything to our growth area. So um, it, that's where it's going to happen. It's going to be in that growth area. Um, Lisa Costello watching the program. She's got a comment with some perspective. I remember as a child, all that was at Zion's Crossroads was the Crescent Inn restaurant, a convenience store, laundry mat, a small barber and beauty shop. That was it. One man owned all of Zion's Crossroads. It's absolutely unbelievable what Zion's Crossroads is today. I mean, it's a success story. I mean, do people see it? I mean, I've been here 21 years. You've been here a lot longer than I am. I see it as a true success story here. Is that how folks see it? They do. They, they appreciate Zion's. Um, and, you know, those that have been around, it, they, they, they've seen how we, we've evolved. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said before, Jerry, uh, it comes back to having some rooftops, too. We got future development on the on horizon uh, from a residential standpoint, but it's going to also bring 
uh, different grocery store chains, another grocery store chain. Uh, you'll see. Can you tell us which one? I can't tell you okay. which one, but you're going to see that happen. Uh, I got people all times that fit. We need a movie theater. We need a movie theater. Well, those rooftops help those things come about. Tom Filer, um, he says, as the county grows, what does FIT see as priorities for traffic and accident control? I'm watching um, in Richmond right now. I live in Fitz's district. I commute now and see the traffic picking up. Tom is right. Um, we're working with VDOT right now. The, the intersection of uh, 15 um, and uh, 64 kind of, um, it's, it's, it's starting to become uh, tough. But what we've done is when we started with that diversion down and the, the new um, interchange there, we started conversations with VDOT. And at the other southern end, at 250 and 15, uh, you can probably still put a roundabout there to redo the traffic. But he's right. Traffic is a concern of ours. We're starting to look at that to see how we can redirect the traffic. Um, because um, as more and more cars are starting to come up, you know, uh, and from Spring Creek perspective, too, we got to start looking and see what we can do from a pedestrian standpoint. Can we add some more pedestrian uh, from Spring Creek over to Walmart and Lowe's, uh, things of that nature? So he's right. Uh, that's a challenge, but we are in the discussion with Virginia Department of Transportation. How can we improve that? Treetop, giving you some props right now. Um, you're getting props from Corey Morgan, who's Washington, watching, watching the program in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Mr. Morgan, welcome to the broadcast store. More comments and props coming in for our friend here, Fitzgerald Barnes. Now, let's talk about the competition here. What separates you from your competition, Mr. Barnes? Well, you know, Jerry, I, I've never been one of those guys that say he did this, I did this. I try to base on what I've done. And my experience, Jerry, I know how to navigate the business people we deal with. I know how to deal with the local people we deal with. I know how to deal with those that, uh, you know, just briefly, Jerry, I didn't have running water as a child until I was 16 years old. So I know what it means to be poor. I know firsthand. So that part of me never leaves. It never leaves me. But my experience dealing with our school system, dealing with uh, private developers, uh, you know, you got developers, they'll tell you, Jerry, that I've worked to cut the red tape out. That when they come to Louisa, they don't have as much red tape, and that's why they come to Louisa to do business in Louisa. But my know-how, how to get things done, and not only how to get things done, the fact that I've gotten things done. You know, so, uh, and I'm not patting myself in the back, but I can't remember very many things I've tried to get done that I didn't get done. So that's what we work on. Marie Witten giving you some props right now on the show. Folks, multiple media outlets watching Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes on the program. That's a follow-up question that I have for you. I'm a small business owner. I'm a free market guy. Um, you know what? I value hard work. I understand that entrepreneurs create jobs. And this gentleman, Judah Wickhauer, has been my right-hand person for 10-plus years. He's a homeowner. He's using his disposable income, keeping it in the community. And when the municipality and the jurisdictions create green tape for small business owners, for developers, for people that are looking to create jobs and drive the economy, I see that as a good thing. And, and so often, government, for lack of a better phrase, causes resistance for folks like I, for folks like me. And, and that's when we have to make the decision, you know what, do I pick up and go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're quite the opposite from that, Mr. Barnes. Well, you know, Jerry, there have been many cases where businessmen come and go, Fitz, I got a problem, such, such, such. I said, hold, oh, stop, I'll be there. And we sit down with our staff, and the question I ask them is, how can we get this done the right way? And, and before we, we will leave with a solution that would take care of our staff concerns and that business person. But I think government need to get out of the way and let small business do what they do. Uh, now, there's a, th a, a fine line with infringing upon your neighbors, right, and things of that nature. But I'm a big believer in that. Let's, let's let small business do what they do. Uh, you take the Fern Cliff Business Park. Uh, it hasn't been there very long, but it's really, really starting to jump. And like I said, with the Amazon distribution center coming there, it's really going to start to jump even more. Um, Sandra Finley giving you props. Melissa Bishop giving you props. Treetop says, so very proud of you. 
my friend. Questions, comments, anything you want to relay to Mr. Barnes, please put them in the feed. Damon Johnson, hello and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you kindly for watching Damon Johnson. Mr. Barnes, how about this question? How do you characterize the, the dynamic, the relationship with the adjoining county, Fluvanna, with Louisa? Well, you know, we were working together on the James River Water Project. And, um, you know, we, we, we have that in common because it's going to benefit both localities. It's going to open up, it's going to open up economic development for Fluvanna as well. Um, and so we, we got a great relationship working, working with them on that. Um, but you know, Jerry, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm one of those people, uh, I'm, I'm not going to wait for so long and then we're going to get it done. I will work with you, but then it's come that fine line. I said, look guy, if it's enough, we're moving on. And so, uh, I'm very aggressive when it comes to that because I have to look out for the citizens of Louisa County first. Mr. Barnes, you got, is it Charles Barrett um, watching the program? Welcome to the broadcast, ma'am. Thank you kindly for joining us. Congrats on that engagement to James Felton. Uh, we appreciate you watching the program here. Uh, Mr. Barnes, talk to us of family and what family means to you, sir. You know, um, my mother is 82 years old, and uh, we talk all the time and uh, family to me I mean you know it's kind of hard for me to talk about this without choking up but when you grew up down south every Sunday we were raised to go to my grandmama's house and we had Sunday dinner and my granddaddy would pray before we all ate my cousins we do what you call our first cousins luncheon we meet three or four times a year in different places in the state of Virginia to have breakfast to keep that connection there uh, man, family is everything to me. I mean, I tell anybody, uh, during my political career, I've always kept my immediate family out of the limelight because of political reasons. But my fa but family itself means everything to me. I'm a big family guy, and uh, I love my family tremendously. Vanessa Parkhill, welcome to the broadcast. Aaron King, one of Western Elmore High School's finest graduates, welcome to the show. Derek Bond, the owner of The Melting Pot, says, great comment, Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes, and has given you some props right now. This is an interesting question that's come in from Steve, and he says, with a man of this kind of talent, vision, and networking ability, Please ask him why he chose to stay in Louisa and not pursue higher political goals. You know, I tell you what, when you get into state elections, I think the party system, whether or not you're a donkey or, you know, I think it ruined it. I think that's where you lose your, your, your connection to people. Uh, as a local elected official, if I walk in food line, I walk in Walmart, somebody say, hey, Fitz, I need to talk to you about such and such. And we'll talk right there in the middle of the store about it. I'm more connected to people from a local level. When you get in a state level, they do what the party wants to do, unfortunately. They don't work for us anymore. Um, and that's why I choose, and I've been approached many times to go, to, to go from a state level, but I like having that independent you know, I run as an independent, and I like having that independent flavor because if my citizens don't like what I do, they'll call me, Fitz. I need to talk to you about such and such, and and that's what I like about it. But once you get to the state level, you you lost your independence. You, people can say what they want to say. Once somebody writes you a check, it's over. Uh, Ms. Barrett says, "Reelect Fitzgerald Barnes. You got my vote." Giving you some props right now. And I'll tell you what, you got, Fitz, we're not even going to be able to get to all these comments. Keep them coming, baby. I'll try to relay as many of these on air to this gentleman that I love. We were supposed to go 20 to 30 minutes. We're 45 <laughs> in. Milton Robinson giving you some props right now. Um, folks and why they should vote for you, sir. Well, you know, um, and this is how I put it. I'm your guy. I will always be there for you. I'll always work, work hard for you. I will always take your concerns to my board. I will say the things that some people won't say that need to be said. And I always will fight for that person who don't have anybody to fight for them. You know, I, I value fighting for bus drivers, for cafeteria workers, for people who will, uh, don't make a whole lot of money. That's, that's who I am. That's who I am. But I also can get up and, and, and talk with the top executive of Dominion Power, and explain to him what I want, you know. Um, and so that's what, uh, that's why I t you should vote for me. 
Um, and then on the other side, Jerry, a lot of people don't know that my undergraduate degree is in agriculture, that I'm a farm boy at heart. When I say I'm a country boy, I'm a country boy. My undergraduate degree is in agriculture. And that I fight, I'll fight for our farmers. I will, I will, you know, I got good reports from there. Um, and so I am well-rounded enough to be able to handle the issues that come to hand. And I've proved that. I've already proved that. My track record is easy to follow. Jessica Timberlake giving you props. Lee Groom giving you props. Madeline Ivory, William Noel Sr., Reginald Harris. The list continues giving you props. Two more, three more questions for you, Mr. Barnes. We'll get you out of here. How did Louisa County manage um, the COVID pandemic? You know, I tell you, um, Jerry, one of the first things that we did was I worked with the uh, health department, Blue Ridge Health Department, and um, the uh, Deborah Coles, our local uh, NAACP chairman, and we, along with Doug Strelly, school superintendent, we set up vaccina vaccinations uh, uh, at the high school, and we vaccinated as many people as we could get vaccinated uh, during, that, during that period. Um, that was the first step to get people vaccinated when it came out. The second step was, like everybody else, uh, following the CDC guidelines. Now, in the rural area, we, it had been a challenge for us. It had been a challenge because you got uh, um, some people who have different beliefs on how you deal with it and others. And so it's, it's a whole different opinion. But we, we started with vaccinations. Um, and like I said, the school did a good job of, of allowing us to use their facilities to do that. And I think that helped us tremendously. Ronald Fleshman, Fitz is a visionary for Louisa. He loves his community. Also, he can barbecue. A bonus for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald Fleshman, it's so damn good. Dude, I had his barbecue at Monticello. It is so good. It's the boss hog. The boss hog. All right. Uh, we'll close with this. Johnny Ornalis, the owner of El Mariachi. Welcome to the program. That's at Zion's Crossroads. Johnny, you got great Mexican oh, food at awesome. El Mariachi. We love what you and Steve are doing, my friend. Awesome. All right. Let's close on this. Louisa County. County, Charles King Jr., go Barnes. Louisa County and what this county means to you. I mean, Mr. Barnes, look at these people that are coming out and just giving you props and love yeah. and singing your praises and, like, have your back and do anything for you here. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been, once again, Jerry, I've been blessed. And uh, I think when you sow seeds, you get the benefits of those seeds, you know. And I've sown seeds uh, over the years to help people. And uh, I think I'm getting the benefits of, of those seeds. And um, it just, I couldn't, you know, when I first came to Louisa, I came to stay for one year. I was working for the United States Department of Agriculture. When was that? It was in 1987, I mean, 89. Get out. I came to be there for one year, and then I was going to try to get a job closer to my hometown. And I ended up coaching part-time, and I fell in love with Louisa. And I've been in Louise for almost 35 years. And so um, it just it's an area that will grow on you. I've had young men that I mentored uh, from New Jersey. They'll move there to teach. And the next thing you know, they've bought a home and they're living there. So it just grows on you. Once you get in, in, in that area, in the location, in Louisa, it grows on you and becomes home. Proud to call this guy a friend. I mentioned at the start of the program, one of the few in my life um, – 17, 18 years ago that said, go into business for yourself, Jerry, work hard and never look back. Johnny Ornalis says, new to the Louisa, new to Louisa County in business, but I like what I hear right now from Mr. Barnes. Johnny, thank you for watching. Elections matter. Local elections really matter. There's no elections from our standpoint that mean more to a community than these local elections, whether it's council or board of supervisors. And I'll tell you what, this man right there, if I was living in Louisa, he'd have my vote. He would have my vote. Thank Mr. You, Barnes, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jerry, for having me. It's thank an absolute you. pleasure. This is the I Love Seville show where we showcase the best of Central Virginia, and I think Mr. Fitzgerald Barnes embodies that moniker in a lot of ways. We will see you tomorrow, Tuesday, at 10, 15 a.m. with Real Talk, our real estate show, and then at 12.30 with the I Love Seville show. Thank you kindly for watching us in a beautiful and glorious day here in Central Virginia. Take care. Dude. Thank you. You killed it. Let me get a picture with you real quick. Okay.